What's up, everybody? This is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga, here to bring you another video with no frills, just the analysis. And today I'm going to be bringing you the season two, episode six review of The Walking Dead entitled Secrets. First off, let me say that this episode um, was kind of hard to judge, partially because I expected um, something a little bit different to happen after Glenn's um, disclosure about the walkers in the barn. Um, while I found the, the, the writing to be still up to par, to still be of a, a very high quality, I didn't find it as brilliant um, as I did in the last episode. And also the sort of um, psychological interplay between the characters and the sort of um, exploration of the relationships of, of different characters to each other, I didn't find that to be quite as interesting and intriguing as in past episodes. So um, this week, only, um, I would say, I would say eight and a half to a nine out of 10, um, but still very good, very good quality, still very good stuff. So um, this week, I'm going to do a, something a little bit different um, in this review. I'm going to combine both um, the summary and the analysis into sort of one section, because the way this this episode proceeded, it, it had um, just too many fragmented storylines. And so it's kind of hard to, to give you a straight, you know, linear narrative um, review. Uh, and also it would just simply be redundant to sort of go over the summary of each storyline and then go back and give you an analysis of each storyline. So I'm going to combine them all together. So first, I want to talk about um, the relationship between Shane and Andrea that's sort of developing. Um, so in, in this storyline, uh, Shane and Andrea go into the city. I don't know which city it is, but they go into the city. And what are they doing? Of course, they're still looking for Sophia. However, they come to um, the city. They start searching um, houses to, to see if Sophia is in any of these um, abandoned houses. However, they run into like um, a horde of walkers. The, the city is basically overrun. And um, so they have to shoot their way out of the, the, out of the, out of there basically. Um, uh, after this, however, um, there's this scene where um, basically Andrea and Shane get it on in the car uh, after they escape from the walkers. And so <laughs> I think this is um, a very interesting uh, storyline or subplot that's that's sort of opened up by this um, because it, it again shows Shane in a different light. And, um, you, you know, I, like I said before, I think, you know, Rick is clearly the protagonist of this series, clearly the 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 prime main character. And yet we get all of this this development with Shane that forces us to sort of um rethink the relationship between Shane and Rick and the sort of position that they hold in this narrative. And so again, we get a new sort of aspect of Shane's identity that's opened up by this relationship between him and Andrea. And um I, I kinda I kinda like this. I kinda like this 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 storyline that's been opened up. Because like I've contended in past, you know, episode reviews, uh I don't think that that Shane is a bastard and while I think that to a certain extent he is a morally suspect character I don't think that he's as bad as um a lot of other people think that he is and so again like I said before this just opens up another dimension um of his humanity and uh, of his identity also, um, when when Shane and Andrea return, and this is the part that I find uh, very, very interesting about this episode. When Shane and Andrea return, um, Dale kind of sees that there's something between uh, Shane and Andrea. And uh, I don't know how you guys interpreted this, but I clearly interpreted this as jealousy on um, uh, Dale's part. I mean, his response was just too too much of an overreaction 
Um, and then when when Dale and Shane sort of get into it, uh, Dale tells him, you know, uh, I'm just looking out for Andrea. And um, he tries to sort of uh, blackmail Shane into leaving the group and sort of staying away from Andrea uh, by 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 reminding him of the fact that he saw when uh, Shane was had sort of the, the gun pointed at Rick and had him in his sights and was following him around. Um, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I mean, is Dale trying to trying to blackmail Shane? Is that what he's trying to do? Um, but Shane sort of turns the tables on Dale and he tells him, like, listen, if you think I'm such a bad guy that I would shoot my best friend, Rick, um, just imagine what I would do to somebody who I who I don't even like. Obviously, the implication being that if, you know, Dale gets in, in his way, he'll, you know, do away with them. Um, but again, Dale to me is 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 more of a suspect character than Shane is. Now, that's not to say that Shane is not a suspect character, a morally suspect character. But Dale, I think, is a is more of a sus morally suspect character because he's always in other people's business. Um, and he reminds me, he just has the, this this very um, snakish quality about him that he's always in other people's business, that he's always imposing himself on other people, like the way he did to uh, Andrea at the CDC. But also, here's something that that's very interesting. Dale reminds Shane that he saw him, you know, pointing the gun at Rick or whatever, um, which shows that, which is you know supposed to show that Shane is a morally suspect character. However, Dale knows that Shane did this to Rick and yet he never says anything to Rick about this. I mean, if he was really such a uh, you know a morally, you know, you know righteous person, then the first thing he would have told Rick is you need to watch your back cuz uh Shane um is suspect and I saw him do some things that you know are not cool and so I think you should watch your back. I mean, that's what a friend would have done. That's what somebody who had, you know, any sort of, you know, moral rectitude would have done he would have gone straight to rick and exposed shane for the person that he thought he was except he doesn't he doesn't do this and the only time he mentions this to shane is when it's in his interest to do so because he's jealous of the relationship that shane has de developed with um with uh, andrew and so to me i think you know dale is is a character that that people need to to watch out for that people need to to really look out for uh, another storyline is the 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 whole you know fact that that Lori is is pregnant and um, the sort of interplay between um, Lori trying to to get um, Glenn to keep this a secret. Um, so obviously she tells him you know not to say anything and and what does this jackass do? Almost immediately. Uh, Glenn goes and spills the beans. Uh, tells he tells Dale about. Um, uh, how, you know, Lori's pregnant and, you know, about the walkers in the barn. And I'm just like, you know, Glenn is, you know, such a jackass for that. I mean, um, it was just really, I mean, the stuff about the walkers in the barn, I can understand that because that puts everybody's safety at risk. But the, 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 the sort of, um, thing with, with Lori, no one was, was, was in imminent danger. And I think it was, was, I think he sort of had, you know, a sort of moral obligation to, to have some discretion in this situation because it's really no one's business. Um, you know, what, what's going on with Lori's body? Um, and, and, you know, what's going on between Lori and her husband? Um, at least insofar as no one else is being affected by it right now. Um, and so, yeah, I just think that was, you know, stupid what, what, um, Glenn did. Um, and then Glenn has the audacity to come back to, um, Lori and he's like, we're still friends, right? And, you know, you know, Lori sort of forgives him, whatever, but I'm thinking to myself, you know, uh, no, we're not, you, that's, you're not a friend, brother. Um, a friend is someone who can be trusted. And it's not just that he spilled the beans, but it's how he spilled the beans, right? Like, I mean, he just went straight to Dale and divulged all, all of, you know, divulged Lori's secret. I mean, he wasn't suspected of anything. He just went straight to Dale and told him uh, what was going on with Lori. And so in my mind, you know, 
Glenn is not to be trusted either. Um, so to me, all the characters who appear like they can be trusted are really people who can't be trusted, as far as I can tell. Dale can't be trusted um, because of, like I said before about Shane, and now Glenn to me can't be trusted because um, uh, he he he's it's it's a it's a sort of betrayal that he's enacted against Lori um, by doing something that was expressly against her wishes, and to me, you know. Um, Glenn really can't be trusted anymore. Um, also, um, um, after, you know, Glenn comes to, to, to Lori and tells her that he spilled the beans or whatever, um, Lori asks him to go back on another, like, scavenger, um, type hunt or search, um, to get her some morning after pills, um, because, you know, she wants to abort the, 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 the embryo or whatever, and um, she's so stupid that she she leaves the the freaking pill boxes on like the 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 desk <laughs> inside their little tent, and Rick walks in and he sees the pill boxes and he figures out that she's pregnant and that you know she's trying to um, have an abortion. Um, so he finds uh, Lori. And uh, they have a, a a discussion, and you know, Lori uh, also reveals that she was, you know, sexually involved uh, with Shane while Rick was absent, you know, because she thought he was dead or whatever. Uh, but here's the thing about Lori uh, and the baby, and this is something that this is just a gripe with Lori's character, and something that I I just don't understand about Lori, and also my thoughts on um, the sort of um, moral um the sort of sort of my take on the moral complexity of the situation um first of all this was Lori is a woman who just a couple of episodes when um Carl was you know had been shot with a rifle and basically on his deathbed this was a woman who was questioning the whether or not it was moral to allow Carl um to 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 be saved or whether or not they should allow him to just pass away and the fact that there's there's such a there's such a tremendous amount of um reaction to a zygote is to me completely out of character with Lori um to me first of all you know a zygote is not a person right like a fertilized egg is not a person uh, an embryo is not a person. So to me, there's no sort of, you know, moral, there's nothing immoral about wanting to abort um, an embryo. Um, you know, to me, um, the thing that makes you a person or the thing that makes you human is your capacity for consciousness. Now, of course, there are, you know, different levels of consciousness, even within, you know, humans. But I think that at the point at which you develop, you know, and this happens around 20, anywhere between 20 to 24 weeks, at the point at which your brain is able to sustain a certain level of consciousness, then I think that is the beginning of your personhood. But to me, a zygote or an embryo does, does not have the capacity for consciousness. And as a result, they are not a person. And um, at that point, there is no sort of, you know, moral ambiguity about whether or not it's okay to have an abortion. Um, uh, to me, uh, if you believe that um, a zygote um, is a person, then you would have to believe that, you know, me as a person, um, that I am in some ways morally equivalent to a fertilized egg that you know a fertilized egg should be endowed with autonomy with moral rights with legal rights um that it can be the bearer of certain rights and responsibilities and to me that that's just logically inconsistent it it just doesn't make sense um in the absence of a moral personality in the absence of the ability to engage in reasoning and rationality there is no such thing as as personhood in the absence of the capacity for consciousness there can be no personhood and to me it's as simple as that and um this just goes you know right along with something that i said at the which i believe i said at the end of the last um episode review um 
pregnant women and babies are just, you know, the most, some of the most useless people that you can have in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. And to me, it's morally unconscionable to engage in, you know, unprotected sex, get pregnant, and then um, it's not clear if she's going to decide to have the baby at this point, but I hope that she doesn't because to me, you know, to have a baby in the midst of a, of a zombie apocalypse is to me just morally unconscionable um, because it forces moral obligations on other people. It forces people to to sacrifice the the security of the group in order to procure the the resources that are necessary for the the sort of you know development of the baby and to to keep the mother you know um safe and it exposes the group to all sorts of security risks and dangers and to me um Lori doesn't have the right to impose those sorts of dangers on the group and um and again, this also goes back to something else that I said before um, in the last episode. You know, there has to be more to a human life merely than survival. And when you have a baby, you have to think about the quality of life that that baby will have. And to me, to allow a baby to be born into these sort of circumstances is just, again, morally unconscionable. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, this is coming from, you know, maybe you want to take what I say with a grain of salt, uh, because like I said before, if, you know, I was given the option to blow myself up at the CDC, uh, I probably would have taken that option. <laughs> That's just me. And also, um, you have to realize that the threat to this baby, um, is very real because there's, if you, if you guys remember this scene from, um, right when, um, the pe when the RV broke down on the highway, uh, if you remember, they were, you know, sort of scavenging for supplies or whatever. And T-Dog looked inside of a car to sort of, you know, scavenge around. And he looks in the back seat and there's a baby seat and there's like blood all over the, the car seat and the baby seat. The implication obviously being that the zombies ate the baby. And, you know... Again, this just an, another this is just another piece of evidence that confirms that this sort of situation is not the situation in which you want a baby to be born. Also, um another sort of storyline that the, that continues to be developed is the the sort of complicated relationship between Glenn and Maggie. Uh, Maggie being the girl that, you know, um that uh that he sort of has this romantic involvement with. Um, so again, Glenn, you know, tells everybody about the, the, the walkers in the barn. And, um, so she's mad at him about, you know, disclosing this sort of information. And now, uh, Maggie is, is mad that, that her father is mad at her. Um, and, you know, while they're on this scavenger hunt, um, they sort of get attacked by, um, the by a zombie by a walker and so she's she's upset about this and um and so the relationship between them have sort of you know soured because you know she's brought him along on this scavenger hunt um for uh basically for Lori's abortion pills um and so she has this whole outburst or whatever um but right after the outburst she kind of um you know kisses kisses Glenn and to me, uh, the outburst just seemed stupid and sort of contrived. Um, it seemed, you know, melodramatic and sort of cheesy. And I, I really didn't, you know, like that sort of scene with her in the outburst. And then right after that, she sort of, you know, kisses Glenn. Um, and that's just, you know, my gripe with, you know, the types of TV series that I like. Um, I, I personally like my TV series with, you know, a major dose of realism and especially if it's a TV series that's for a mature audience and, um, the sort of writers, the writers expect us to take this seriously. And if I take this seriously, then it has to have, you know, some, some realism to it. And that sort of scene with her outburst. And then, you know, right after the outburst, Maggie turns around and kisses Glim. That just smacks, smacks to me of sort of, you know, melodrama. And I, I really didn't like that. Um, but what's interesting about, you know, the sort of dynamics of that relationship and how it's being complicated by, um, Maggie's anger at Glenn, um, it's sort of complicated because, um, 
Maggie and Herschel, her father, seem to think that the walkers are actually people. And I'm just, at this point, I'm like, you know, of course, this just, you know, confirms again that Herschel is a sort of fake Christian. Um, I was trying to cut him some slack because of the walkers that, that were in the barn um, in the last episode, and we didn't sort of know why he was keeping them in the barn or how that was going to play out. But now um, uh, this is just more evidence that Herschel is a fake Christian. He's keeping the walkers alive and locked in the barn because he thinks that they are still people. But on the other hand, he's willing to kick Rick and all of the other survivors off of his farm. And I'm just like, I mean, something is, you know, morally suspect and, you know, logically inconsistent about that line of reasoning. Um, so first of all, let me just deal with this question of whether or not the walkers um, are our people and whether or not they're alive. Um, to be direct, I don't think the walkers are alive. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think that they're people. I don't think that they have personhood. And, you know, I don't think that they are beings um, that 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 are I don't think they are beings entitled to the moral respect and the moral rights that we um, would accord to other people like, you know, like you or me or, you know, Rick or the other band of, of survivors. But but even if I concede that the walkers are people. Let's just assume for a second that they are actually people, that they have personhood, um, you know, and that they have, that they are entitled to more respect and more rights that we would give to any other regular person. What are the consequences of that? What follows? What follows is that these people still have a right to self-defense. Um, and that as far as I can tell, um, these people have no moral obligation to place themselves in danger in order to keep these zombies alive. It's as simple as that. They they have a right to self-defense. They have a right to keep themselves safe. And they 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 don't have a moral obligation to keep these, you know, people alive if these people are so dangerous that um if they're released, they're immediately going to start attacking and eating um everybody. Um, so just for, you know, for the sake of security, for the sake of, of maintaining the safety and security of all of these survivors, I think it would be prudent for them to just kill the walkers off. I mean, um, again, you know, what kind of quality of life can these, these zombies really have to begin with? As far as we can tell, they have no quality of life. They have no access to the, the higher mental functions um, that of consciousness. Uh, and as a result, I don't think that they, they have a right to, to, to any sort of moral respect. Um, so those are just my thoughts on the walkers. Um, other thoughts about this episode. Um, I think, I mean, maybe you guys might agree with, disagree with me, but I think that, um, the Sophia subplot is being dragged out just a little bit too long, just a little bit too long. Um, so hopefully there'll be some resolution of, um, the Sophia subplot in the next episode, or at least some, some sort of, you know, major progression in that subplot. Um, because, um, there's one more episode that comes out on the 27th, um, which is next Sunday. But then after that, there's a, a hiatus, a very long hiatus, um, in this series, and it doesn't return to TV until February the 12th. Um, so I really would like to see some major resolution of the Sophia subplot before um, we go on a hiatus. So, um, yeah, uh, this is your boy Uber Hikari, a.k.a. The Nerd Nigga. Uh, just brought you another video with no frills, just the analysis. Peace and uh, have a blessed day.